Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Woodson at Rhonda's Ruggery, surrounded by rugs. Rhonda happens to be Rhonda Coors, who at one time in her life was a dean at McMurray College, and about 10 years ago, Rhonda found a much more interesting way to make a living. I, am I, is that right? Was more interesting? That's very correct. We're looking over your shoulder now at this immense buffalo rug. And when you say Rhonda's Ruggery, that's what it's all about here. Is every, you, you've got this, this large metal shop here. You make rugs out of these wild animals. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. We do quite a few a year. Yeah, you do. Like how many? I do about 500 a year. And it's interesting how they come to you. you the, the taxidermists who are actually, you know, their, their customers are the hunters, the ones who, who kill these animals. The, they go to the taxidermist, and the taxidermist has become aware of your work. And if, and if the customer wants a rug, they send the, the pelt to you. Correct. It comes to me totally tanned, and if they have a head in it, the head's mounted. Mm -hmm. And then all I do is I do the rugging, the framing around the rug, the skin, and... Uh, Send it back. All, all I do, right? That's all, all I, do. I do. Well, 10 years ago, that's the way it was. It was just you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I started but, out alone. But now you've got a really nice operation. You've got four or five ladies working in there who I all do. have, you've got a division of labor and you've yes. got a process and we're going to get to go through that during this program. Absolutely. Show us some of the some of these items here. These are just beautiful. Well, here we have a beaver. And as you notice, he's very shiny mm -hmm. and uh, very, very soft. And he had this particular beaver came from the state of New York. And if you can see the the head or the face, uh -huh. the face is still on there, and you can feel the. These beaver's are the ears, ears uh -huh. right here, and then his eyes are just right in here, mm -hmm. and this is his nose. Uh huh. And this would be nothing but a stretched out skin if it were not for you. And you and, and you've got a real a knack for making these into 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 beautiful, useful things. And we're going to show how that's done during this program. Yeah. We most recently out of out of many beaver skins made a king size quilt for oh. a customer mm -hmm. and uh, it was wonderful <laughs> it was wonderful and i bet it's really warm i'll bet it is yes. what about this mammoth thing behind you and here? this is a buffalo it's an illinois buffalo as a matter of fact it is um it is i have uh it's a local one as a matter of fact i have the skull at my house so we ha we've saved every piece of this um it's really soft. You it's, would think that it'd be more coarse than this, but you it's would think pretty so, soft. But, but it's very, hours of brushing that make it really mm -hmm, soft. Mm -hmm. really but it's soft. really, I mean, you can tell it's very dense, too. Yes, it is. Because they're, I mean, they're, they're made for winter. Uh, yes, they are. And, and they, you can tell that, that it's Yeah, very they dense. winter well. Mm -hmm. They do. And then this is a skunk. And it's very pretty. Very soft. Yeah, it's pretty. Yes, it is very pretty. See, we're used to only seeing those on the road, you right. know, with, with, a, with a pool of blood next to them. But that really is, it's very, very pretty. Yeah, once they're tanned <laughs> up and you blow dry the hair and, mm -hmm. and comb it all out, they just turn out wonderful. <laughs> now, this is the majority of what you do, right? It is, it is. This is a bear rug. And as you see, it's got a mounted head. Mm -hmm. His ears are back and he's really shiny. Um, and of course, my girls and I have made him that way. He doesn't mm -hmm. come in looking like this, but he goes out yeah. looking like this. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, that's part of what this program is, is we, we have the tanned hides that you receive just as you receive them. So we get a chance to look at that and see what their condition they come in. Right now the phone's ringing. Yeah. We won't pay Sorry. attention to that. That's okay. And then up here on the wall, this is, when you look at this, it's mammoth and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe what it is. It's a cattle lot cow. It's a cattle lot cow. Yeah. <laughs> it just turns out really great. It's got a really soft tan so that it, it's just very pliable. You can take it down and use it for a coverlet or whatever you want. Oh, um, man. Much, much more beautiful in death than in life, it, I would say. They truly can, are. Can I pick this up over Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Because this, this one fascinates me. This Step is a, over your bear here. Yeah caribou and of course caribous are in very cold climates mm -hmm. so he's got a very thick soft skin and hair oh, and, and it's just... beautiful isn't it and and some of the some of the hunters they they want to have the head still on mm -hmm. and but most most don't most want the head gone well this particular one probably had the head mounted mm -hmm. and now we're doing this we have in the past for especially for african um they mount the head and then we'll do a backdrop for them in the shape of Africa. Mm -hmm. 
So that works out really Beautiful. well. And then they'll hang the head on the on that shape. Okay, so the, our first stop is on the other side of this door. And in room two back there, you have a bear that has come in recently. Mm -hmm. And when it comes in, it's tanned, and then you have to moisturize that skin back Correct. before you can work with it. Yes. So that's our first stop mm -hmm. on the other side of this door yes. in the processing plant. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I got to drop your your uh, animal off here first. Okay. Rhonda, it looks like a hanging bear. Looks like we didn't like him, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when they come into us, we have to then dip them in a vat of water. And in the water, we have kosher salt, just regular old kosher salt, yeah. and pert shampoo. Really? Yes. And the kosher salt, after they dry, it, it reduces the size of the pores, and it makes the hair stay in longer. Because as they age, the skin becomes brittle, and you risk losing the hair. Really? And what the pert shampoo does is just Basically what you hear on the commercials, it conditions the hair uh -huh. and it makes it soft and easy to work with. So you can see that that skin and that hair is still wet. Mm -hmm. you, so you just pulled it out of that drum of, of, of salty water. Yes. And how long will it hang there before it It's going to hang here about 30 minutes and then it's going to go to a plastic bag and sit overnight. So that it's really hydrated because a lot of times around the head, we don't want to dip the, the entire head in. Mm -hmm. We just want to dip up to the head. Yeah. So when we fold it up and put it in this bag, then around the head will become moist also. So it's okay. easier for us to work with. Okay. And that, now how did you learn this trick about the pert shampoo? Because, uh, because the hair was falling out? Or? Actually, I learned it from uh, a taxidermist friend who said, you really need to be doing this after I got started. He mm -hmm. said, do you soak them in the salt and do you use the pert shampoo? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. And he said, you so really they, need to So they do already this. knew that, that the, the skin had to be soft and the hair had to, would fall out yes. otherwise. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, that's good to know, isn't it? Because it you don't, is. I mean, if you're going to have a bare rug that you want to last for the rest of your life, Absolutely. you want the hair to stay intact, right? Absolutely. Okay. This, the next process, after you're in bag overnight, mm -hmm. You've got a, a platform here, which is used for what? Well, I'm going to sew up any holes that are in this wet hide. And okay. then I have a young man who comes in and stretches these hides out here. As you notice, they are all symmet symmetrically s stretched. Um, these paws are in the same place on both sides. These paws are in the same place on uh -huh. both sides. And are these, am I looking at staples here? They are staples. They are staples. Home Depot loves us. Oh, wow. You go through a bunch of them, We don't go through you? about 5,000 a week. Uh -huh. Wow. Um, yeah. oh, okay. And we do the same with um, smaller hides. As you see, there's no head on this one, but we want to make sure that this line, the center line, is right down the middle and it gets stretched the same on both sides. What kind of animal is this? This is an axis deer. Axis deer. Do we know what part of the world that comes from? Um, I think it comes up from Pennsylvania and Maine. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. So it's a it's 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 a U.S. deer. I've just yes, never heard that term before. Yes, it is a U.S. deer. Before. And it looks like it's a small animal. It is. Small. It's it's smaller than a regular deer that mm -hmm. you find around here. Mm -hmm. And there's the king of beasts yeah. here. We have a lion here. This guy's already been stretched and dried, and he's just waiting his turn oh, up on the okay. table. Oh, okay. He's been stretched and dried. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's ready to go. What? And, and we're going to go through the process. But what you're going to do is you're going to put a put a lining. Uh, under on his skin, right? We are, and then we're going to sew a backing on it, and we're going to frame him out really mm -hmm. well. You know, this is a good time to talk about this. Some people who are watching this program might say, hey, wait a minute, you can't just kill lions and bring them over here. And, and, and but, but you have assurances from all of your taxidermists that these are all legally killed. Absolutely. Um, my taxidermists have to prove to conservation that these were legally killed before they can send them out mm -hmm. to me. So and then yeah. so I don't have to prove anything to yeah. anybody because we know it. But oftentimes you see the paperwork. I too, do don't see you? the paperwork. I'll see yeah. the tags and we send the tags right back so that it's always, always evident that yeah. it's legally taken. Do you get a lot of lions? Don't get a lot of lions and typically when we do get a lion, they're going back to a museum or to a zoo. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about zebras? Do you get a lot of those? We do. We do about 100 zebras a year. No kidding. And you'll notice So there are a lot of zebra hunters. Oh my, yes, yes. And a few years ago when the economy was bad, of course, that cut down on the trips to Africa. and, the, and uh, Yeah. So, but now the economy's better and they're hunting more. 
and we stretch them out so that their face is totally flat. Oh, sure. And you can you see, see nostrils. Here's the ears. Yeah. Here are the eyes. eyes. I see. So what you've taken, they've, they've, they've taken the, the skull and just left you the skin. Right. Huh? And that's typically how they do zebras. We occasionally will get one that has a mounted head. Mm -hmm. But typically they're like this, and, and they do use them to walk on. And they use them in, in room with, you know, set tables yeah. on top of them and things. But we try to always send them back with the mane up like this. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, we want the mane to stand yeah. up when they put them on their floor. How, how long will these hides stay stretched like this? Two days. They'll dry in two days. We, we um, use a cattle dryer um, to actually blow the hair on the, the bear mm -hmm. and on anything that might have a fluffy hair. You do which use helps a, ha with a hair dryer. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> we do. And then we put okay. these large fans on them overnight and we run the dehumidifier all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we have to keep the humidity out of the room or they'll keep stretching on us. What are these samples over here for? Well, actually, these came off of this guy, this lion. OK. Because we have an old lion over on our shelf that we need to put these parts on. So a lot of times when you send an, a hide in, we're going to add to it, but you're not going to get the same parts. Uh -huh. You're going to but get you parts won't know it. Else. You're not going to know yeah. it. No, you're not going to know it at all. We're yeah. going to put them on. You need on spare them. parts sometimes. We need right? spare parts. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Linda Hartz, that is one handsome badger. Isn't it though? It is. It's a good-looking animal. Yeah. So you really never know what you're going to be working on, do you? No. No, not till I come in over morning, mm -hmm. and Rhonda tells me. <laughs> That's right. And I look on my shelf, and I know okay, what I Okay, here's have. my shelf. Here's the animals I'm going to be working on. And for this badger, for instance, let's turn him over, because this guy, you've already done the work, much of the work you need to do for him. Linda will go around, and she will draw these lines on the outside, and that's where you need to cut, right? Right. Has this one been, been already cut now? No, I'm no. ready to cut him. Okay. Well, can you show us how you would go about doing that? Sure. I just go around the line. Oh, that's like a scalpel. That thing's really sharp. Oh, yes, it is. Do you ever cut is. yourself? <laughs> oh, my Very goodness. sharp. Oh, that is. I've gotten my own fingers in the way before. Oh, I bet you have. Man. Okay. That is very, very sharp. And mm -hmm. I will do that all the way around. Okay, all the way around, and at some points, now this one, for instance, this one is not in that shape, but you can see where some places you would have to sew where there were some, some little tears here. And this right. has already been sewed here, okay. Yeah. So you'll cut all the way around, and that's how you get the exact shape that exact she has shape in mind. That okay. will be. Okay. Yes. Now, let's look at this bear that you have out here, huh? Okay. Most of the work that y'all do is, is bears. Yes, most of it is. And you've already cut down. You've, now cut, the out, you've cut along the lines like right. we were discussing. You've done all that, and you've got him in the right shape, right? Yeah. So He's what are you going to do next? In the perfect shape that he should be. Mm -hmm. But he's what? In the perfect shape that he should be. <laughs> right, gotcha. So what, what do you do next? OK, now I turn him over, mm -hmm. and I brush him really, really well. And as you can see, there's a lot of bare spots. Yes, there are. And I guess that just goes, goes for all of them, doesn't it? Yes, it does, especially here and on the flanks. Mm -hmm. What do you do about that? So I take uh, my dye, and I... Well, I have a feeling I better get out of here when you do that. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> I'm going to take care of some of those. And where? She has sewed, or I have sewed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cover them up. I guess every animal has those bare spots, don't they? Yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, there's very few animals that ever comes in that is not dyed. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, I need my other glove for a minute. Uh. While we're looking, Linda, would you hit this big spot over here just so we can see what a difference it makes? Okay, now see this wood. That's already been sewed too, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's been sewed. And as you can see, that would look terrible. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, uh, somebody wants to hang it on a wall. I'm going to blend that in. Mm -hmm. And when it is all dried, mm -hmm. it will look like it is hair. Okay, let's, let's pretend that you have dyed this whole skin, okay? Uh-huh. Now, what would you do next to it? The next thing I would do is brush it again. Mm -hmm. Then after I've brushed it, I'm done with it. You're done with it. Okay, so you've yep. cut it to the right dimensions, uh -huh. and you've got the, got, you've, and you've dyed the hair, and you've so sewed it. up the places that need to be sewed, and then it goes on down the line, huh? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, <laughs> you're very welcome. Okay, Rhonda, now this process, so she's cutting out a border, or part of a border, I guess, huh? She is doing that, yes. Um, we cut the number of pieces that we need for each animal, and she's cutting for a small animal now. Those pieces tend to be smaller in width, mm -hmm. and she's over here crimping it, putting a design in it. And this is what you'll see when you look at the animal as it's facing down, this is what you'll see lining, like, like Absolutely. It'll, yeah, the it'll border, just giving it a border. Giving it yeah. a border, framing mm -hmm. it. Uh huh. And yeah. she does two materials. She does a beige and a black. Right. And that sort of makes it stand out, I guess. Absolutely. Huh? Okay, and she goes to the sewing machine. Yes, going to the sewing machine to sew those two pieces together. While she's doing that, I think I can probably show what we're, what we're expecting to see here. We've, we've got the skunk here while she's getting set up. When you can see how that two-tone border is going gonna, is gonna to look when she, gets, when she gets that cut. And she's just using a, a regular heavy-duty dress machine. A what? A heavy-duty dress machine, mm -hmm. um, and that's the only type of machine we use in the shop. And as that's a felt. Of fact. The material's felt, right? The material is felt. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then she'll finish that, and we'll go over here. Yes, once because we've got one in the we got a bear in the process over here, right. don't we? Once Cindy gets it all sewn together, then it comes over to Betty, mm -hmm. and Betty's going to sew it onto the hide and make ruffles. Ruffles. How nice, right? Have ruffles on your bear. Yeah, hair. everybody wants a ruffle on their bear. <laughs> well, that is a heavy duty machine. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. It has a leather needle in it. But it, mm -hmm. it it's a 1913 model sewing machine. No kidding. So it's wow. older than anyone in this room. Oh, way older, yeah. Way older. That was the year my dad was born. <laughs> I see. And that's a, this is a pretty lengthy process when you've got a big a big skin like this. It bear. is. Yeah. It is. So we saw the ruffles. Yes. Getting sewed on to the hide. Yes. But that that doesn't really give you the backing that you need because what you have to if you're going to have a rug, you, it has to have a, a, a solid backing. And it also has to have some support, like some foam of some kind. Absolutely, absolutely. What happens next is um, we will bring it over to this table after the ruffles are sewn on. We will reinforce every stitch that we have taken. We put glue around it and put this piece of material here so that those stitches can't come undone. Mm -hmm. And then we um, use a spray adhesive and put this fiber fill in. Okay, if we can show that. And that just gives it some body. I see, and that looks yeah. like it's about three quarters of an inch thick or it something. It is. Yeah. It's yeah, it's about an inch. Five, I six, okay. It's called Five six fill. ounce. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's about half ounce. Do you glue yeah. that onto it? It's a it's a spray adhesive. Uh huh. And so it, and it's not really glued, but it won't shift, which is uh, which okay. is what we're after. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to move and roll. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. And then we use this material, this black material called Trigger, and um, it's actually what is used to make um, uniform clothes out of. And it, so it's tough. It's tough material, um, doesn't wrinkle that well, mm -hmm. that much. So we use that. And That's we'll, an expensive material, I'll bet. It's, yeah, it, it can be. Mm -hmm. We order it from the factory, so mm -hmm. we get a deal. Yeah. But um, then we go all the way around this, and we just pin this material on, 
And you see right here where I have just cut like every half inch. And we do that because when we turn it under, it will lay flat. It'll lay flat mm -hmm. all the way around the paws mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you will pin, you'll pin the entire border all the way around. As, as we can see, you're almost finished with this right, one. Right, right. But those pins don't stay in there. No, the pins are going to come out. We're going to, like I said, we're going to turn it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to give it to Nada. Well, let's walk around there and see what. Okay. And she's got one started yeah. here. And Nada stands here every day sewing by hand mm -hmm. a hem stitch and sews all the way around that. And it has to be hand, well, in, in your shop it has to be hand sewn. In my shop it has to be hand sewn because we don't want any stitches showing. When we send it back, we want, want them to see only on the opposite side the hair. And if, you, and if you didn't hand sew, it would go all the way through and you'd see the stitches. You would see the stitches in, in the... That's, that's pretty brilliant, I yeah. think. I mean, and that takes, it takes a lot longer, doesn't it? It does. Stitch? It does. It yeah. takes a lot longer. And so Nada probably has her thumbs... She doesn't even have a thimble. I can't believe it. Her thumbs... Occasionally, <laughs> Nada uses with, a thimble. Yes, with the binding, I use uh, a thimble. <laughs> okay, so in this... This is getting close to the end of the process, isn't it? Is. It is. This will be ready to ship probably in about a half hour. Mm -hmm. Wow. This, this is suspense, Rhonda, because while we were talking earlier, the UPS guy came and he delivered something. We don't know what it is, but we think it's a pelt. We right? think it, we, well, we know it's a pelt. We just uh -huh. don't know what we're getting. We what are we getting? What we weren't expecting here? anything from this taxidermist. But it doesn't look wow. like a bear. Well, it, it is. Oh, it it's, is? It's two. It's a bobcat. And a bear. And a bear. Okay, you hold it up. I'll take the box. Okay. And do we know where this taxidermist sent it from? Well, it came from Louisiana. Louisiana. Can we turn yes. him around? Let's take a look at that we face. sure can. This is a Louisiana black bear. Well, we don't know where he shot him, but... Could have been Louisiana, though. Yeah. They do have a bear hunting season. Uh huh. And, and then a bobcat. A bobcat, and we we, this is much smaller than the one that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. But we were talking, you know, she was cutting out a lining for or the ruffles for a small animal, which was probably a bobcat earlier. Right. You do a lot of bobcats, huh? We do quite a few. And now that we're going to be hunting bobcats in Illinois again. I know. That yeah. Can't be bad for business if you're a taxidermist. No, can't be. Can't be. Okay, so these guys just came in. They're going to undergo the process that we started by dipping the bear when we first started Correct. the program, huh? Okay, and then they'll get dipped and hydrated and go through the whole process that we just saw. And if we look over to our right over here, we can see that you still have a lot of these guys in waiting, don't you? We do. They, they come in and... What's this fella here? This is a jackal. A, you're kidding. No. They're in jackal. Africa. Yes. And he's just got lovely colors. If you can hold... It, yeah, hold him out. Very lovely colors. No kidding. I've never seen a jackal. I mean, well, I've seen them on TV, but, oh, really a handsome animal. It is, yes. They have a bad reputation. But they do. <laughs> <laughs> but they're a fine looking animal. They do. And down here? We have another lion, and this one is a very old specimen, mm -hmm. and he's going to be redone and given a bath and mm -hmm. smell better and get mm -hmm. new lining, a new border. So they've held on to him for a long time and just now deciding to do something with him, well, is that? Well, he actually it? was a rug. You'll see that he's got his old border on there. Oh, okay, so and you're to gonna redo him. Yes. You're gonna redo yes. him, okay. Um, another big bear another here. Another bear. And this guy's got his lining too. He does, he's and waiting on a different color backing. Uh, so he, we just stuck him there okay. while he's waiting. And then all of these bears are just waiting. These have not, yeah, these have, they they haven't, haven't been hung yet. They haven't had anything done to them. Okay. And then we have... And then a badger. I think we looked at the badger earlier, mm -hmm. but they are, boy, they're a handsome animal, too. They are. They're so You don't pretty. get a lot of those, do you? No. No. And then what about these parts? Are these spare are, parts again? These are spare parts again. You'll see the face of a black bear and the face of a brown bear and the mm -hmm. leg of a coyote. Here's, here's the, br the face of the brown bear uh -huh. here. And then up here, this is a this is a coyote. That's a coyote, yeah. And I imagine uh, there aren't a lot of people that want coyote rugs, but I guess we once always in a while, have right? a few. Always uh -huh. have a few. Okay. There's one other specimen I want to show here while we have time. Okay. okay. I'm going to walk around the table this way because this guy, this guy is really special. And we're looking at 
a very, very old polar bear, aren't we? Yes. And of course, polar bears are off limits to, to hunt. But back 75 years ago, when this guy was taken, that wasn't the case, was right. it? Right, it was not the case. And you can tell how old it is simply because, as you see here, it's falling apart. Mm -hmm. It's falling apart. Well, you have your hands full with this one. We do. Because this is one of a kind. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and you can't mess up on this one, can no. you? No. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to put a latex, it's a spreadable latex material that dries like a plastic mm -hmm. on this. And we'll be able to put the pieces of hair back in it. Mm -hmm. But we won't put the original pieces in. As you see, they just break. Mm -hmm. What we do is we dye hair for it. And of course, we don't have any polar bear hair because they're extinct here right. in our country. Right. Um, so we dye hair, black bear hair and brown bear hair. And we're just going to lay it in there because this material that we put on the back will just allow us to stick it down mm -hmm. and then overnight will dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what kind of hair did we say this is? This is a black bear hair. Okay, and, and we've, it's we've enough, dyed it. close yeah. enough in texture that it won't, nobody will really notice, right. notice the difference. Right. Huh? Do you know anything about, I said it was 75 years old, do you know anything about how this, this bear came to, to, to be here? Usually I don't, but this particular bear, um, the person, the attorney who sent it to me uh, was the attorney for an estate, and the person who died left his entire estate, which I'm assuming was a large amount, mm -hmm. to a church, to his church. And the church is having this restored and putting back in the house as a memorial to the guy who, who died. I and see, left all the I money. see. Hey, I got one more question for you. Mm -hmm. How does a person go from being a dean at a college to wanting to do this? <laughs> <laughs> It was quite a leap, and a leap of faith. Um, actually, McMurray College is my alma mater. Is that right? So I left college and went right to work for yeah. them and just built my way up through the years. Um, was there for 22 years, I think. And uh, as the Dean of Enrollment, I did a lot of traveling, yeah. a lot of traveling. I was on the road four and five days of, out of each week yeah. of the year. And I finally just thought, no, nah, I need to be home. I'm tired. I'm tired. So I. But how did you come to this? Now, I called up my cousin who you saw sewing ruffles on. Mm -hmm. She's from St. Louis. She had a business in St. Louis that she sold to someone else. And I called her up and said, do you think I can do that? She said, well, yeah. And I said, well, she's my mentor. She trained me. so." And so then it was a matter of having the taxidermist find out about you right. and come to you. Absolutely. So we advertised in a couple of magazines for a couple mm -hmm. of years. Now we do no advertising. It's just all word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Rhonda's Ruggery. Rhonda's Ruggery. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I'd love to see these startup businesses do well. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, as we're standing here today, in come two more, two more specimens, uh -huh. you know, for you to make uh, rugs out yes. of. Yes. So. We set goals for ourselves, but now we're trying to slow down a little bit. So we're, we're getting particular who we work for. We're going to keep our better clients and probably not take on too many yeah. more. But yeah, we're, we're pretty happy here. We have a fun shop. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> if you're in Woodson, Illinois, you wouldn't know this is Rhonda's Ruggery, except for maybe for the, for the bears that she has out here on the bench. But it's a fascinating story. She has 300 taxidermists that send her specimens, and she'll do about 500 animals a year, making rugs out of all kinds of critters. With another Illinois story in Woodson, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.